So let's get straight into it. The papers like, like yours, they absolutely must have a Tory government in power. And if, you, if you're going to pretend that that isn't the case, then I think that's disingenuous. Okay. The argument seems to be because Keir Starmer was not found guilty by the police, that the scrutiny of Keir Starmer over that was not legitimate. Right. Where's okay. the apology then? Did the editors at the Mail not believe that it was in the public's interest to ask serious questions of Boris Johnson regarding his trip with Evgeny Lebedev off the record. Was where, was, where was the feature of it, that? Because that's a huge story. These 10 front pages is for Currygate, so where was the balance? Well, f firstly, <laughs> firstly, well, I mean, what do we want? Do we want a free media? How's or, that free? Uh, you heard of conflicts of interest, Dan? This is the thing. Never heard the phrase. No. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot doubt that sometimes the Daily Mail reports truth. My goodness, right. of course they do. But yeah. you do not, you are You are evading the point that I'm not so evading often the, point. I'm, I'm the, the point so often, head on. Daily Mail does not report fact. Welcome to The Table, a new debate show from Byline TV where we'll be having the conversations that matter with people we might not always agree with. This isn't just any talk show though. At The Table, there's no hiding behind sound bites or slogans. We are going straight to the heart of the issues and we'll be exploring the philosophical and cultural underpinnings behind our positions. Tonight, we'll be talking about the British media and the role it plays in our politics. Is the revolving door between our government and our press a cause of concern? And is it right that the majority of our national newspapers, nearly 70%, are owned by a tiny handful of non-dom billionaires? And who are these billionaires? Well, there's Viscount Rothermere, owner of the Daily Mail and the Metro. Rupert Murdoch owns The Sun and The Times. He also owns talk TV parent company News UK. There's Frederick Barclay, who owns The Telegraph. And who can forget Evgeny Lebedev, son of sanctioned Russian oligarch and former KGB agent Alexander Lebedev, who owns the London Evening Standard. Between these four men, a huge amount of influence is held over the UK electorate, despite none of them having ever faced a vote themselves. So, is drastic action needed? What can we do to restore some of the balance in our media? And does it really matter who owns the press? Well, joining me at the table tonight to answer exactly that are viral social media commentator, Super Tansky, and political commentator for The Mail on Sunday, Dan Hodges. So let's get straight into it. <laughs> Dan, you work for The Mail on Sunday. So this is Rothermere's paper. What do you think? Like, is it right that newspaper owners who are foreign or non-domiciled, such as Roth Rothermere, should have so much influence over an electorate? Well, I mean, I would ha have to start off by um, challenging your premise that in some way the electorate are being manipulated by these evil media barons. I mean, I think we have in Britain, fortunately, we have one of the most uh, diverse medias in the world. I think we have one of the most effective uh, uh, medias in the world and fortunately we have a we have a media which is, i think especially now at the moment in the sort of in the midst of our sort of our, our sort of cancel culture and, 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 and trigger warning uh world we have a media that is prepared to challenge consensus is to the fury of many occasionally prepared to challenge liberal consensus and is prepared to upset people on occasion, and I think that's that's the way it should be. But it's the selection of news, and it's the narrative that is, it, that is spun. So, for example, let's take Partygate. Mm -hmm. um, again, your paper, Dan, we had, I think, 10-plus front pages dedicated to what transpired to be a legal, perfectly legal curry and beer. Mm -hmm. uh, curry kiss, gate. Uh, kiss on 10-plus front pages. Fine. If you want to, if you want to be that diligent, and if you want to uh, drill into an investigate story, 
fine, but can you see where it doesn't feel balanced, balanced and it doesn't feel like you're reporting the news when there are what some might call bombshell stories that fail to get a sniff of a story, such as, for example, our own PM, Boris Johnson, who left a NATO meeting on the Russian poisonings in Salisbury on British soil to go and party and stay with Evgeny Lebedev, who is the son, and also met with his father. He is the son of Alexander Lebedev, a sanctioned former KGB agent for Putin. This didn't seem to make any front pages, and yet 10 plus dedicated to Kistama. So can you see why people think actually there's a manipulation there going on, there's a selection of what we will tell and what we won't tell? Yeah, I can see that, but that's because it's it's frequently presented in exactly the way that you presented it. So, you know, we had the, so as we had at the beginning, we had the, well, we've got the Sun and we've got the Daily Mail and it shows the British media is biased. We do have the Sun and the Daily Mail. We also have the Mirror, we also have the Guardian, we also have the Observer, we also have the Independent, we obviously have the BBC all of which are either left-wing or liberal leading outlets with significant influence. The funding, it, though, Dan, um, the issue is the funding, the exceptional amount of money that goes into those big papers you've mentioned. When you look at the mirror, they do not have the same level of funding and the same level of reach. And in regard to things like Currygate, it was... It was overt bias. You can't deny that that was overt bias. Um, <laughs> And also the, the issue of democracy comes into that in the sense that th there's a lot of speculation that possibly that influenced a further police investigation into Keir Starmer. And when you look at how close Johnson is with that particular paper, um, then you can see that, yeah, there's the, the option that there could have been influence to, you know, promote a, a further investigation to someone that was ultimately innocent. I don't see how that can be seen as democratic. Okay, let me, let it looked me... like Johnson was influencing, um, you know, to get rid of a political opponent. The reality is anyone watching this programme is free to walk out of their house now and buy any newspaper they, they want. They can buy The Mirror, they can buy The Guardian, they can buy The Observer, they can look at The Independent online, they can buy The Eye, they can switch on and listen to the BBC, they can watch programmes like this. There's never been a time in British history where we haven't, we've had, haven't had such a, a diverse media. Now, on the specifics, because obviously I get this one a lot, on the specifics of... Party gate and beer gate. You're absolutely right. We did. We, we, a, a lot of attention was focused on beer gate. I think you said 10, 10, 10 headlines. Well, can we ask just why? Why was that? What was the editorial because steer there? It, it wasn't an editorial editorial steer. It was because we uh, on the mail, unlike certain other outlets, we actually do believe in balance. And equally, let's look at the issue of the issue that actually 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 brought him down, which was um, uh, I've completely forgotten his name now. The, the, the pincher, the pincher, the pincher affair. Well, it was the Sun it newspaper. Down. It was the Sun newspaper, one of the newspapers that you identified as being biased in relation to this. The Sun newspaper that actually broke that story. That's, we actually, that's Dan. I think we can all agree that's because it became inconvenient to continue backing Boris Johnson. So. I, if you think that a person or a prime minister has serious, like Keir Starmer, you said he had serious questions to answer about mm. Currygate. Yeah. And you talked about balance. Mm -hmm. Did the editors at the Mail not be, believe that it was in the public's interest to ask serious questions of Boris Johnson regarding his trip to stay with Evgeny Lebedev off the record? But this is this is record. He he got rid of his. Why was this not? Detail? Why was this not of major concern? This is this is. Some might say this is a almost a, a traitorous it's act. It's a national security risk. Where was where was the feature of if, that? Because that's, that's a huge story. Because if ten front pages is for Currygate, surely for balance we're looking at twenty front pages for Boris Johnson's meeting. So where was the balance? Well, f firstly, <laughs> firstly, well, again, let's just we're talking about balance. OK, so the argument is that because Keir... The argument seems to be because Keir Starmer was not found guilty by the police of, of, of breaking Covid laws, that the scrutiny of Keir Starmer over that was not legitimate, 
right? It's, that seems to be the argument. Where's okay. the apology? Then? No, okay. actually, I'm not, no, 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 I'm not even saying that. No, wait, no, wait, can, wait, no, 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 I'm not saying that. But, 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 but we no. all did on so, that. And right. the police exactly. So we're not exactly. So, so, so exactly. So we cannot, can we? We cannot use your claim of balance is preposterous. Then, because if you think there are because because ten front pages dedicated to if you think that if the people at the Daily Mail think ten front pages is warranted for investigating Curry and there are serious questions to answer, and you said today that it's about balance, then balance would have been at least 10 front pages and serious questions yeah. to Boris Johnson. And, and where were they? And also, and where were they? Where were they? Where, they, where were the 10 were. front pages in relation to Partygate? No, in, in relation to Boris Johnson foregoing his security detail and off the record go flying right. from a NATO meeting about Russian poisonings on British soil okay. to go and party and stay with <laughs> Lebedev and Lebedev okay. Jr. Let me, let me explain that. When that incident occurred and that incident was reported, we reported it as well. But that that was that was that was years ago. That was that was an old story. Now the point at which it's not an old story, Dan. I'm sorry, but you're being misleading here. In what way is it not an old story? Oh, all right, all right. It's, it's, okay, it, okay, it, okay. Perhaps wait. when it was old, it, it, there was okay. no detail. On what it. date? Now we have detail. Oh, okay, and okay. are you not an investigative newspaper? Why aren't you asking the questions? Because it okay. wasn't of interest. And also, right. Lubov. I mean, you look at the right. defence secretary's um, former defence yeah. secretary to Putin's wife. Okay. And her excessive donations even after Russia invaded Ukraine. Okay. Why am I not seeing this on the front of the right. Daily Mail? Let, 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 let me say. Firstly, in relation to it being an old story, what was the date when it was first revealed Boris Johnson had made that visit? When was it first reported? Who first reported it? I'd imagine it would have been not too far after the Salisbury poisonings. Right, so what date was that? Not off the top of my head, I've got no right. idea. What relevance what is that? The fact is that because we have, talking more, about, we're talking we have about whether, more information Because now. it's the definition... I was going to come on to that. We're talking about the definition of an old story. It we're takes time for this years to come ago, out, right? though, doesn't we're it? If no one hold reports we're talking it. Se we're talking several years ago, right? Now... It was first reported several years ago. We reported it. All newspaper outlets reported it several years ago. The news agenda moves on. The political agenda moves on. That's not just for us. That's for all other, other stories. Well, how many how many stories has the Guardian splashed I'm on? Sorry, in, in I'm the sorry, I'm sorry, Dan. How you many splashed, how many you splashed the Keir Starmer picture of him having a beer weeks weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and no, then you and then no, it no, re no, sorry, rehashed no, sorry, and got sorry, back no, onto the front pages no, when I'm it was sorry. because yeah, you, it you needed the narrative. No. Let's believe Partygate is, is, and let's assume that everyone uh, that we were things were covered adequately, right? My concern is that this this claim of balance is completely false because when there are matters that are far more significant than Partygate, for example, the complete. Uh, well, we talked about the, the Russian trip. We've talked about the financing of his uh, flat. We've talked about um, uh, offering his, his wife or then mistress a job. These are things that if you were really oh, balanced as a paper, you would report on in the same way, with the same scrutiny, and you don't. And that absence, that silence is deafening. Well, then why do people not know about it generally? Why is that not water cooler talk? Because, because people... That, that, well, no, that's a good question, because this comes back to the broader issue. It's because it doesn't fit the narrative. So if we report a story in relation to Boris, likely like the, the Abbott party, we serialised in the mail the book which had these revelations about Carrie and the job and all the stuff that everybody, that everybody subsequently said everybody tried to cover up, because it doesn't fit the narrative. So no one is going to turn around. You are not going to... You, you decide, not... Dan. You decide who fits the narrative. You fits decide the narrative. The narrative. No, See, no, I'm no, sorry. No, did, did, no, did, no, did you directly? Not you directly. Did Keir Starmer buying a donkey sanctuary for his mother fit any narrative? No. Yes, and yet you took because... it upon yourselves to make a huge story out of it. But, 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 but what that, a bastard, but the yeah? Of, but, but buying a donkey sanctuary. But the House of Commons Commissioner literally... It was literally revealed this week that Keir Starmer why at the time... About, why can't we talk about the donkey? Forget the... Forget no, the how long ago did that happen, no, Dan? How no. long ago did that happen? Why is that I not know, an old story? I mean, we, we reported we that story when he became Labour leader. leader. We obviously didn't we report it We need to before. move on. My summary is that papers like, like yours, they absolutely must have a Tory government in power, right? This is a very unbiased summary, this is, this but continue my, with your I, summary. I said it, it's my own, my, my own thoughts. And therefore, that's why they do everything in terms of the stories that they push to maintain a Tory government. If they had continued their support for Boris Johnson when it became clear that they could, he could not even have the support of the country anymore, yeah. they would have lost the next election outright. Fine. So they had to change the horse they were backing. At okay. that point, and only at that point, did they shift gears and go, no, no more, Johnson. Oh, we'll start breaking some stories on him and we'll start <laughs> to back, back Liz Truss. And if, we, if you're going to 
pretend that that isn't the case, then I think that's disingenuous. OK, so a couple of things. If, if that, I mean, that, again, that's a popular thesis. If that's the case, why did the son back Tony Blair? Because Tony Blair got into bed with Rupert Murdoch, had a very close relationship, Fair point. became but... his, the godfather to one of his kids and, and gave him promises and reassurances right. that Murdoch wanted to hear. And that's the only reason. Right. And in fact, thank you for raising that example, Dan, because it shows you how it is our newspapers that choose our next prime minister, our newspaper owners, and not the electorate. Well, I agree well, with I, that, I, yeah. I contest that, but, but, your, but your, your initial point was that come hell or high water, the newspapers have to ensure there is a Tory government. Mm -hmm. Right, that wasn't a Tory government, was it? That was a Labour government. Because it suited them, because John Major was pro-EU. OK, but that's a different argument. And the way you're avoiding... But you're avoiding... No, but, no, but, again, but again, this is, again, I'm sorry to <laughs> repeat myself, comes back to narrative. You specifically said the, 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 the job of the Conservative newspapers is to ensure, come what may, there's no, I didn't say come government. what may. Moving on. Well, you did. Um, next, next question. Is it right? So let's go back to the accountability of newspapers. So is it right that there is actually no, it feels like no accountability uh, for the lies told in the press? So from the mail alone... Is it right there that there's no, no accountability From the, the mail alone, did you stick with Another me? Another balanced question. These are all, uh, please feel free to argue. From uh, the mail I, alone, I we have seen a, a daily, sometimes daily deluge of lies, which <laughs> feels like they're spreading Don't division and hatred. Um, there's proof oh. that I've, I'll just bear with me. Very good. Um, we saw, for example, loads of hatred uh, aimed at towards migrants, which culminated, some may argue, in Brexit. Just to give you a few examples from your paper. So, Turkey's membership of the EU. Apparently, talks were starting in June 2016. Never happened. Also, we were told millions of Bulgarians and Romanians were coming over. I quote, all the planes and buses were full and sold out. This actually was um, investigated. There was a complaint upheld. Ipso, who is the regulator, absolutely useless. And by the way, guess, oh, this is interesting. Ipso is the independent standard, press standard organisation. So the regulator. Paul Dacre is in charge of the editor's code of practice for Ipso. So, so there you go. <laughs> just put that in your back pocket, people, right? So Ipso uh, took seven months in particular to, to investigate that particular claim, really millions of Bulgarians and Romanians. But um, eventually it was found that they had broken the editor's code of practice, but they refused, Ipso refused to publish their findings and refused to tell the Daily Mail to tell the public they had broken the editor's code of practice. Third example, and then you can tell me everything you, you're thinking about this. Even Edge, Microsoft's internet browser, began to run notices on the Daily Mail website in 2019, warning the website generally fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability. So is it just the Wild West out there? Well, I mean, let's again, let's just use, I mean, I'm glad you raised that because that's a classic example. So you used in that the example of Brexit. Now, there are two things I would say. Firstly, uh, the Daily Mail, you said my paper, the Daily Mail advocated uh, a vote for Brexit. The Mail on Sunday, and I was writing for it at the time, advocated for Remain. So again, it doesn't quite fit with this idea that there is this very specific line that is handed down from above. In relation to the broader issue, though, because, I, like I said, I think you do touch, touch on something, you're absolutely right. The, the, the Mail, the Daily Mail, Mail on Sunday, have focused a lot on the issue of immigration. Now, that is an issue which the Liberal media, for years, indeed decades, refused to focus on. And it was one of the biggest failings that we've seen in the Liberal media over the last few decades. And I include myself in this because I was advocating a very pro-immigration um, uh, line at the time, both when I was writing at The Telegraph and also when I was writing at The, at the Mail. Those of us who were writing that believed complacently what we were writing and we believed the Liberal consensus, which the debate about immigration had been settled, Immigration was, was perceived as an unalloyed good. Anybody who, who, who claimed it wasn't was a, was a racist. Anybody who reported anything in relation to immigration was stirring up racism. And then Brexit happened. And we didn't know what happened because we didn't see it coming. You know, none of us on the Liberal side of the, uh, side of the debate saw it, saw it coming. And that's a classic example, as I was saying at the, uh, at the start of this, about why we desperately need the diversity we've got 
We need newspapers which actually do honestly reflect, whether we like it or not, what huge sways the British public opinion are thinking. I don't think that's true. I think that you kind of you influence the opinion of people. Well, no, but, very emotive no, that's, headlines no, that's and very contemptuous no, look, headlines that's, that's, and patronising no, that, headlines. That's another, that's another discussion I think we need to have because, I mean, you, you, you've been patronising. What I think is patronising is this idea that somehow I and my colleagues somehow dictate what people in parts of the, oh, you know, various on. parts of the country of think. So that, so that people... So what no, you're why saying... Why do you so, do it otherwise? Why do you why put else, these stories yeah, out? What, what else because, is there to do? Not to inform and influence. Not even wiki, because, like, another, like, as you say, the edge... They, you know, well, it, the, the, the mail puts out misinformation. No, like, of course we attempt to... No, of course we attempt to inform and influence. But the point is... With misinformation a lot of the no, time. No, not with misinformation. Well, why then have the um, mail been sanctioned more times than any other title by I I IPSO then? Well, the point is... Can we just... But, but hang for, on a second. For, for that second. very problem, but, but for being generally unreliable and spreading misinformation. That's the quotes. From... Um, that was from the, an article about Wikipedia also refusing to allow citations to okay, get well, to the Daily Mail. OK, well, if you want... If you want to use Wikipedia as the... I'm not as using as Wikipedia as... That's, that's an that's, article about that's Wikipedia. But that's, yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah, but that's based on what Wikipedia did. But anyway, let's go... But, but, but no, I, I think actually this is the fundamental point. Your argument is in particular, in relation to an, an issue such as immigration, that if it wasn't for us, if it wasn't for the male specifically, if it wasn't for the right-wing press in general, people's perceptions about immigration would be markedly different. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been seeded for the, years regarding the no, EU, and it's not just no, the mail. It's but, not just the mail. In, in you know, to be fair, it's broad swaves. It's 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 the Sun. It's you know, no, the Spectator to some extent. Fine. The Look, mail. Yes, it's a, and, it, and it's so, and it's those what you're what you're saying. What, okay, so in particular. fine. Yeah, what you're saying is the people in the people around the country who vote for Brexit, people in around the country who at the last election in these in these constituencies where they'd never vote Conservative. Of, before vote consider vote for Boris Johnson, they all did so because they were somehow brainwashed. By, Not just by the papers. By, by, there was by, the, by, the, by the papers. Mind. Brainwashed by, by, mis, by, by misinformation. Mind you, papers. like at this and point, that you, 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 and others on the, the liberal left are are uniquely able to, to to see through this disinformation. But for some reason, they they can't. I think it's the sheer volume and of it. it that wasn't, is, it, and with respect, mm, this is why. But, but with respect, in, in a more broader point, this is why the liberal left, certainly at a political level, keeps losing. Because you guys generally believe that. You guys generally no, that's believe not, that. No, that's it's not, not a case of being out of touch with the narrative. It's the fact that the weight of the narrative pushed by those papers is so strong and it comes from all directions. And then you add on to that the immense amount of bots and memes that are being put out on Facebook, if like you, millions you, of pounds being put into that. If you went out of, if you went out of one or went out, of any of the sort of the big metropolitan conurbations in Britain, when it's towns, villages, etc., you would find views in relation to into immigration much more strongly conservative, small c conservative. And where did they come from? They didn't just pop up out of nowhere. you would find in any in any. They've got worse though. It's got it's got because exceedingly worse. Where though. it comes from is from people's to use the, one of the phrases it comes from people's lived experiences. It Doesn't comes from, come from people you have people by, by the, by the newspapers. You have people being vox popped in the streets, ask their thoughts about migration, ask their thoughts about Brexit, and they literally regurgitate Day words way, that are spun out, spun out from the Express, mm. spun out from the Daily Mail. But also, don't make out that we're, we're trying. So, we're some like, so we're not some esoteric group that thinks, well, uh, we get it because we're clever and we read the Guardian. That's not what it is. There is there is a huge yeah. swathe of people who write trust their newspapers mm -hmm. to deliver the news. They aren't from a, a new generation of people who are a bit more savvy, perhaps. Um, so they look at the newspaper, the paper that their parents read, that their grandpa, their auntie reads, and they go, that's where we got the news. And they trust mm -hmm. it. And you have a duty to report and give balance, and you don't. And, true. and you have a, a duty to these people who believe you, who, give, who pay for your paper, to, to report the truth. And you don't. A time and time and time again. But as I said, this is this is the fundamental problem. Papers like the Mail and uh, the other papers on what you would call sort of the right-wing press 
have consistently reported facts in relation to immigration and consistently reported and accurately reported what the public's growing reaction to that was. Now, the lies... The, 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 no, no, because there's some facts in there. Doesn't, because does, there are some facts no, in there. No, no, no. There are facts. I cannot doubt that sometimes the Daily Mail reports truth. My goodness, right. of course they do. Yeah. But you do not. You are you are evading the point that I'm not so often the, point. I'm, I'm tackling the, the, the point so often on. the Daily bit. Mail does not report fact. No, but it, a lot of it's opinion dressed up as fact. Let's put it that way. And and a lot of people like the issues with immigration. I mean, I feel that that's been seeded and. For, for a long yes, time, Johnson started the, the issues with the EU. Of course, you feel. Of course, you and feel. And who that's been benefits? Said, but with respect, of course, who benefits you from Britain but, leaving but, but the respect, EU? But the non-dom respect, with respect, with respect, with Of course, you feel it has been seeded, and you have to feel it's been seeded. It's not a case of feeling; you, it's a case you of you seeing it. If you, if you can't create the narrative and actually get people and believe yourself the narrative that 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 that, 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 that conservative views in relation to immigration are the product of the evil conservative press. What, what do you have to do? Oh, you have to constantly, the Liberal left at that point has to constantly reassess its worldview, and that is one thing the Liberal left just steadfastly I, I refuses to do. I kind of like the clumping of things, because things, don't, again, they don't exist in a vacuum, they don't exist in these groups. It's just simply a fact of that the headlines are not accurate. Look at, look at what happened, for example, when Johnson, after essentially getting to the point of having almost a bloody siege, in number 10. Look at the Daily Mail headline. What have we week. done? What have we done? Or there's a war balance, on balance. when you're trying to Amber. talk about... I mean, and, and the saying, article just the other day about Johnson, for goodness sake, it was saccharine. It was dripping in bias. The, the, back, the background... Let's, but let's stick to what we were talking about. Which Can we not? That is what we're talking about. We're we're talking about. For once, like... it would be nice to have a question answered, because... Well, I, in relation to the issue of the, uh, the investigation into Boris Johnson, uh, what a number of people have said is, if we're going to have the investigation, should the investigation be conducted by people who have already prejudged the outcome of the investigation by saying Boris Johnson is already a liar and is already guilty? Now, and I've also pointed out that Chris Bryant recused himself from being chair of that committee for precisely that reason. Now, some people think that as a result of that, this is in some way a kangaroo court. Oh, that, my goodness. That, that, hang on. Okay. People, I, know you, I know you don't agree with it. But again, unfortunately, you have to be, you are going to be subjected to opinions you don't agree with. That's, that, that's, that's an opinion that's been put forward in the paper. But, 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 but equally, in very, relation to... Very difficult but in relation, people on that committee but in relation who to, don't think that, but in, because, because he, by his own admission, has done it. It's just everyone's seen everyone's it been happen. It's right, been, so he's, again, he's, got, he's openly so, so again, lied so in the House again, of Commons, so right, he's not so, going to have seen that. So exactly. So again, what you're saying, so again, what you're saying is, it is quite clear that he's guilty, we need the investigation. Some people are saying, well, maybe we need to ensure that the investigation is carried out in a way that isn't prejudged. But the other point I was going to make is, again, coming back to the diversity that you will see in the mail, which you won't see in other titles, <laughs> I disagree with that. I write for the mail, I disagree with it, and I've said it, I've, I've, well, you I, I've kind said of, it publicly. You would, wouldn't in, you? in relation, I mean... and again, this is the other problem with, with respect that you said. So, you're right, there was an article that was published yesterday, I think, by Richard Littlejohn, in which Rich, Rich, Richard Littlejohn said that the, the, the FBI have completely messed up in relation to the raid on, on Trump. Firstly, and I say this as someone, I don't think there's been anyone who's been more critical of Donald Trump than, than me. I, I mean, I've literally described the man as a fascist. Sometimes I, you I, get it right, Dan. I, thank you. Sometimes thank you, you do, yeah, to be fair. I actually am very, very concerned about what the broader political implications of what the F F FBI did, and the FBI better get this right. And all these people are wandering around saying, oh, of course the FBI got it right. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't do anything that's daft as that. Remember what they did to Hillary Clinton. If it wasn't for the FBI being daft, Donald, Donald Trump wouldn't have been president in the first place. But, but going back to the point we're discussing with the media, that is an article written by an individual commentator in the mail. Now... That is what we need. We need this. We need people in, in our media who write things that lots of people are going to disagree with, lots of people are going to get angry about, and lots of people are going to debate. But that is what a free, free media is. I think we're, okay, we're not going to agree. It's been a really good chat. I think, I think part of it for me, and I just want to... Something I think is, we've, we've touched upon is I really struggle with the fact that you've got these people that are very closely um, embedded, if you like, 
you know, the Harry Coles, Dan, Dan, I would put you in that bracket, Laura Koonsberg when she was there, who was so close to the government, who, who, act, as, who act as, in my mind, who act as... Um, they just repeat what they are told. It's always an anonymous government source Unfiltered, has said. Yeah. Now, now, my understanding of a journalist from when I was a kid is that if someone tells you it's raining and the other person tells you it's sunny, I don't want you to tell me that. I want you to stick your head out of the window as a journalist, find out for yourself and tell me. And that is the lack of value that we are getting from our journalists. And you are just, I find, the right-wing media is just repeating the propaganda that is given to its select journalists and steering the narrative in a way that has become so divisive and has seen, sadly, where we... It's culminated in, sadly, where we are now. Uh, what did you guys think at home? Did anyone change your mind? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more like this from Byline TV. And you can also get involved by becoming a member at byline.tv forward slash join. If you sign up, you'll be supporting Byline TV and you'll get access to loads of perks too, like deciding what topics you want to see on the table and telling us what questions you want to see the panel answer. There are also hours and hours of exclusives like extended content, live Q&As and the chance to talk directly to the producers of Byline TV. Just go to byline.tv forward slash join to become a member and thank you again for watching and we will see you again next week at the table.